Born in Montreal in 1921, George Burling was captivated by aviation at an early age. At the age of nine, he suddenly becomes obsessed with, with flying. He lives fairly near this airfield, and he starts seeing them, and he thinks, that's the life for me. I want to be an aviator. I want to be a pilot. If you're a young boy growing up in the 1930s, your point of reference is the First World War and the great fighter races, and it's that combination that he's very excited about. It's a combination of shooting and flying. Anyone can fly, uh, anyone can shoot, but can you do the two things together? And that's what most people can't do, and it's one, one thing he's absolutely determined to become a, 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 an absolute ace at. Being an individual, being a lone wolf, is seriously frowned upon, no matter how good you are as a pilot. And so Burling always, from the outset, from the moment he arrives in England, is always an outsider. He's always a misfit. He doesn't quite toe the line. Burling does have very, very good eyesight, but what he's done and what other pilots don't do is he's trained himself to be able to pick out objects in the sky before anyone else. And the reason he's done that is by this process of scanning, which is now completely standard practice if you're a pilot. The point is, if you start fixing on a particular object, your eyes focus, and then they've got to unfocus and focus on something else. So he's learned how to pick up objects by doing this sweeping, where you look across and you go, you don't, and you sweep back again, and then you sweep across, but not at exactly the same height as the previous sweep. George would be sitting outside the dispersal hut. His hands would suddenly clench, and then a few seconds later, up they would go. He was practicing deflection shooting on a bird. Deflection shooting is the art of estimating exactly where a moving target will be when the bullets hit. When he started, you couldn't see anything at all, but within a couple of seconds, I'm very sure, you suddenly see a crow or a starling. It had to be a fast bird, something which was flying far, seagull, something which was moving and George would follow it through. It got the deflection right, down it would come in his imagination. Down it would come. Nobody else would know, but George was doing that, practicing deflection shooting all the time. Burling is one of very, very few pilots that masters deflection shooting. And that's very, very hard to do because you've got to take into account the speed you're going, the speed your enemy is going, the speed of the bullets, and the fall off of the bullets because, of course, bullets don't stay at the same height that you're firing at. What made you decide to come here? I want to fly planes and shoot down Germans, sir. OK. We'll take you. Thank you, boss. George Burling and Maddy got on very well because I think that Burling respected Laddie's very much. Laddie thought that he was the most fantastic pilot, incredibly brave and shooting down all these planes. It was something any commander, squadron commander, would love to have. So th they did all right. I think he was impatient. I think he thought, why the hell am I here? I can go out there and kill some bloody Germans. Let me go. And he did. Being in a dogfight suggests that it's a fight to the death, and it probably is. You don't want to get hit. You're trying to outsmart the son of a bitch and get inside him. It's instinctive. You can't be trained not to be scared. You're looking for the Germans, and the first thing you see are little specks. And that's the fighters that are ahead of the bombers. And that's the enemy. But he used to see before anybody else saw. He shoots down a Messerschmitt 109 from 800 yards. I really can't impress upon you strongly enough just how extraordinary that shot is. Effective range really is only about 450 yards. To shoot something at 800 yards, that's almost half a mile. A plane at half a mile is a pinprick. He would just spend his time honing his skills. 
So he would continue practicing his sweeping, he would kill flies. There were also a large number of stray dogs around and he used to practice shooting them through the eyes with his pistol, which is quite hard because pistols don't have particular revolvers, don't have great range, but he would always do it. And this was another way of improving his marksmanship. He would work out things that could improve his performance and he would make notes about sorties he'd been on. He had all these formula which he could call upon, but he, he had honed them so well that after a while, it just became instinctive that he could make the mental calculation in the nanosecond that was required. The Spitfire's four machine guns were calibrated to converge on a deadly sweet spot some 320 meters away. George Berlin had his guns readjusted, so the stream of bullets would meet 100 meters closer in. Only a limited amount of ammunition could be loaded into the wings, enough for just five three-second bursts. The Canadian reckoned that the closer he got, the fewer bullets he'd need and the more kills he could make. You're closing. You hold off, you hold off, you hold off until you get on top of them. And then you press the button. Burling proved that you could not have to waste ammunition. He could maybe fire two shells and the poor chap in the other airplane was no longer there. Because he only ever requires a one or two second burst, his guns don't jam. So if you've got best part of 15 seconds worth of ammunition, he can make every one of those 15 seconds count in a way that the vast majority of fighter pilots can't. George Berling made a final ingenious adjustment. Usually, every fourth bullet was a bright phosphorus tracer to help pilots take aim. But the Maverick Flyer trusted his keen eyesight and asked his armorers to replace the tracers with normal rounds. It meant that the enemy couldn't see them either. By the end of July, his score is rapidly mounting. He managed to shoot down four in one day. One of the people he shoots down is a key Italian commander. He is a really, really mean, mean killing machine. I think he loved rushing off and shooting them all down, because he didn't seem to have any fear. He was only interested in flying and fighting and shooting. That was what had consumed his whole being while he was there. After months of recuperation, George Burning returned to Canada a hero. The air ace who led the fight back that broke the siege of Malta. But the solitary young man dubbed the Falcon of Malta was not suited to public relations and yearned to be back in the air. He was just 20 years old when he came back a hero. And uh, uh, he was put into uh, the spotlight every place that he went, and it was... It was not the place that he felt comfortable. The intent of the Air Force at that time was to put him on a bond tour across Canada. And, and he bails out, he has to bail out. There's no, th th he can't go on, he's badly, badly wounded. Having beaten the overwhelming odds against him for 20 weeks, the Spitfire ace was out of luck. What he had seen in Malta, I'm sure troubled him uh, a lot. I can remember him speaking about a little girl that he saw just wandering on the street and she had part of her one arm blown off and the other arm was just hanging. And uh, that, that disturbed him a great deal. Without a war to fight, the air ace drifted aimlessly until a new conflict beckoned in the Middle East. In 1947, Israel is looking for people, mercenaries effectively, who will come and help them in the war against Palestine. Burling is one of the people that's contacted, and he immediately puts his hand up. At last, here is the opportunity for combat flying again. He doesn't care who he's flying against. He doesn't care who he's flying with. The important thing is that he's given that chance to do combat flying once more. In May 1948, he'd swapped a Spitfire for a Norseman transport plane bound for Tel Aviv. While on approach for a stop at Rome, 
His plane exploded in a fireball, a freak accident that finally felled the falcon of Morta. In a short yet stunning career as a combat pilot, George Burling scored 31 kills. He was just 26 when his last flight ended in a fatal crash. Burling's complete purpose of life was to be a fighter pilot. That's all he was interested in. And what he had was enormous skills and agility in the air, phenomenal eyesight, and superb marksmanship. And those three factors made him stand out in the top half a percent of the pilots of the war. George Burling's contribution to the war was extremely important. He destroyed a lot of enemy aircraft. He helped to a very large degree to deflect, halt, prevent the invasion of Malta and hence uh, Southern Europe. George, in my opinion, was the finest fighter pilot, and I went through all through the war as a fighter pilot. I met some very distinguished fighter pilots. But George was my number one. Shake it, 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 shake it